How good a role player are you? How good a gamer are you? I'm about to roll the dice. Just by listening to it, tell me, is it a D10? Is it a D12? Or is it a D20? Did you get it? A stupid little test. But, um, what I'm saying is basically, dice are one of the most important and recognisable features of a gamer. Um, some veteran gamers, some gamers have stacks of dice, and when they roll them all, it sounds like an avalanche on the table. Um, they have favourite dice, they throw away unlucky dice, etc. They are perhaps the most recognisable badge of a r tabletop role player, more so even than um, the rule books, because dice are common across many different systems, whilst the rule books is attached to just one. And players are very attached to their dice, they like to roll dice. And the um, for me, the good ones accept the bad rolls as well as the good rolls. But the question in this video is, when should you um, fudge a dice roll and when not? Back in the early 90s, I played my first game of Rollmaster. I created a character who was a veteran soldier joining a party who had been charged with defending this village against unknown attackers that were coming at night. Now, we questioned the surviving villages and in interviewed them, but they gave us very little information. They'd seen nothing. They stayed huddled up indoors and heard stuff, but people just disappeared and they didn't know what was going down. With so little information, my, my sergeant did the only thing he really knew how to do, which was he was good at digging trenches. Up near he went, chose a good place overlooking the village, dug his trench, covered it with camouflage, and sat down for the night with his beaker of ale to watch what was happening and get an idea. Now, whether the the attackers had been watching him or not, they arrived, they were aliens, and I reckon they'd seen him building that trench, but maybe they just made a good perception roll. Whatever it was, they attacked. An energy weapon, when it, he had only a part of his head exposed between the cover and the trench, but zero, zero. 6-6, six, six, hit, hit him, and turned his brain a liquid. That was the end of him. His adventure career, uh, in entirety, was he dug a trench and interviewed some villagers. Not a thing of epic memory, but it stuck on in my memory because it cut something short. I enjoyed that experience because that was my first experience of Roadmaster. I'd played D&D loads of times, and in D&D, um, you know... You need a run of bad luck to get even close to death. And you know if you are r there with the possibility of dying. In Rollmaster, the possibility is always there. And I don't know whether overall I like that system. I prefer... I, I like to go with dice rolls, but if, a, if one dice, if un one unlucky dice roll can wipe out a favourite character in a second... I'm not sure I like that amount of vulnerability. Somewhere in between the two would be ideal. I'd say that I like, uh, if this had been my first um, adventure, I would have hated it. Um, I spent hours or a, long, a lot longer preparing this character than I ever spent playing him. There's very little payback. Um, and if it had been my first encounter of role playing, I probably would have left disappointed and never come back. In that. Uh, in that circumstance, I would have suggested fudging the dice roll and ignoring the death. Not something I generally go for. Which comes down to my basic guidelines. Fudge only for beginners, for novices, to draw them into the um, hobby. Once they've got a taste and they've seen both the good and the bad, go with the dice rolls. And they should uh, have enough enjoyment of the hobby to take failure as well as success. Because failure... I call it failure, but actually it's, it's not failure, it's just another interesting story. And we're here, not rolling a 1, rolling a 20 is not memorable. It's the effect of that roll that you remember. And it's those memories that live on in your imagination and make you love this hobby. Um, and uh, an interesting failure can motivate a character much more to come back and fight that monster and beat it the second time. If you beat it the first time... It, it might well be forgettable. So my general guideline is go with those dice rolls. This also applies to the GM. Um, 
GMs sometimes plan out boss battles and want their boss battles to be memorable, but if the party of adventurers roll exceptionally, they have a lot of crystal hits, um, then there's a chance that um, there's a chance at the end that a boss might be wiped out in one round. Should you go along with that, or should you cheat and give the boss more hit points, or whatever it is? I'd say, with veteran adventurers, don't cheat, just go with it. They'll have fought other boss battles, they'll have been memorable. This one might be memorable because it's short. That'll be what makes it stand out um, for a beginner player. Fudge and make it memorable. Make it play for enjoyable. And that's basically my tip. Um, in any game, when you're starting, don't apply all the rules necessarily because players may not be ready for it. Like in, if you're teaching a young child a sport, you don't necessarily play to all the rules. You just give them a taste of the game. Same with role playing. But after they've got a taste, that's when you apply all the rules. That's my opinion anyway. That's the way I like playing. I play online a lot and I hope to see you there too. My dog wants to go out. Bye.